Hey guys, Ian from Badass Rocketry, and we're gonna take a look at a minimum diameter rocket. It's gonna be the Mach 1 Starlight 38 millimeter. Let's check out the build. Here's what I have to build this kit. I have some decals. Be sure to buy the decals. They make the rocket look much better. Fins, a lower body tube, a stuffer tube, an upper body tube, rail buttons, a shock cord tether. I got some extra bulkheads from Mach 1. Those go inside of the nose cone shoulder, a nose cone, an AV bay coupler, a Mach 1 badass multi bay, and then also the badass minimum diameter retainer. I start every fiberglass build by first washing all the glass components. Then I get to sanding all my surfaces. For this kit, you really need to sand the motor stuffer tube, the aft end of the fin can, nose cone shoulder, and inside the nose cone. And then I really went all out on the fins. It was in a regiment of 80 grit sandpaper, some Dremel work, and the blunt end of a razor blade. I sanded up the fin roots just above the notches, as well as along the side of the body tube. I also made sure there was a lot of sanding and roughing up on the root edge of the fins. After sanding everything, I wiped it all down with isopropyl alcohol. Once sanding was complete, I moved on to setting up the motor retainer. I'm using the badass minimum diameter retainer found on the badass website. I threaded the retainer into the threads of the closure and screwed that onto the largest motor case I intend to fly with this rocket. Then I slid the motor case with the retainer into the aft end of the rocket until the rear closure of the motor was up against the body tube. You can choose to do this with or without the motor stuffer tube in place. One of the things I really enjoy about the Mach 1 minimum diameter kits is the clearness of the glass. It allowed me to see exactly where I need to drill into the airframe to screw in the retainer. To drill these holes, you can use either a drill guide that comes with a retainer or your badass build guide if you wish. After removing the retainer, and drilling the holes, I added the retainer again and screwed it in with the supplied set screws. Retention is done, and better yet, it is replaceable and serviceable. If, however, you prefer, you can simply epoxy the retainer into place. Now it's time to focus on the fins. The Mach 1 BT60 minimum diameter kits come with a motor stuffer tube. It's basically a coupler, and that goes into the aft end of the rocket to hold the motor tube in place. As a result of this, the rocket fins have a nice slot to set into. It is a second nice feature not found on most minimum diameter kits. This needs to be epoxied into the aft end, and to do so, I got some thin epoxy and brushed it into the fin slots onto the coupler tube. Then I twisted that tube as I pushed it in. I set this aside to cure as I worked on the fins. All right, now we're gonna talk about how to put the fins onto the rocket, and we're gonna do that with a method called a Kevlar fillet. Kevlar fillets are a great alternative to tip-to-tip -tip fiberglassing. Basically what you do is you're gonna pass Kevlar through the notches or the rakes within the fin, and you're gonna attach that Kevlar to both sides of the airframe. And that means that the fin has a lot more surface area actually attaching to the airframe than just the root edge. So that when the fin wants to pop off, if you're going Mach 1 or Mach 2, it's not gonna be able to pop off easily because it's gotta also take all of those Kevlar strings off of the airframe as well. So if you're curious on how that looks, Continue watching, I'm gonna show you how to do that step by step in the video. Check it out. The first step in a Kevlar fillet is cutting some thin Kevlar to size. I'm using 100 pound braided Kevlar and cutting it so when it lays against the fin and the body tube, it's going to overlap the Kevlar on the next rake over. After I had all the Kevlar in place, it was time to epoxy the fins to the rocket. You can always epoxy the fins first, then cut the Kevlar, but I found this method to be much easier. So to epoxy the fins onto the rocket, I first put some epoxy on both the fin slot and the fin root. Then I placed the fins on the rocket and secured them down with the badass build guide. I was careful not to add too much epoxy to these roots because I did not want the epoxy to run into the Kevlar. If you do that, it makes the Kevlar harder to lay flat against the fin when we get to that step of building the rocket. The next day, after the fins were fully cured, I removed the fin guide and started on the fillets. This was tricky at first, but I'm going to share with you the best way I found to make this work with little frustration. You want to lay the Kevlar along the fin root so the Kevlar strands are touching the body tube and you'll end up using epoxy to keep them down. But to do this, I wanted to first tack them into place because my epoxy cures slowly and I wanted to ensure they didn't lift off the body tube while it cures. So what I did is I took some fast curing super thin super glue, also known as CA, and I poured it into a cup. 
Then I took a sharp end of a broken tongue depressor and dipped it into the CA. I was not looking for a lot of CA to go on the stick. I wanted no drops to be visible. Then I took one thread of Kevlar, laid it in place, and tacked the very end of it onto the body tube. I was very careful not to get the CA on any other section of Kevlar because CA dramatically weakens Kevlar once cured. I did this for all Kevlar strands on both sides, carefully pulling each one so it was loose enough to lay along the airframe and not so taut to be lifted up from the airframe. Once that was done, it was time for the epoxy. Using a small brush, I brushed the Kevlar along the airframe with epoxy. I was not concerned about getting a lot of epoxy in the fillet at this time. What I wanted was enough to fully coat the Kevlar. And then I waited. The epoxy loosened up some of the strands and they did detach from the airframe. But my epoxy was not immediately tacky. So I kept waiting and waiting until the epoxy was so tacky I could press the Kevlar strands into it and they would stick into place. It was very, very sticky at this point in time. I did this for one set of fillets, then I moved on to the other set once the previous was fully cured. After all three sides were done, the Kevlar fillet was done. And it was time to cover all that work with a traditional fillet. You will make these fillets like any other fillet you've done in the past, but with some small tweaks. First, the fillet radius ought to be large enough to clear the Kevlar. Second, if you are using thicker epoxy, like rock epoxy, you will want to push it into the fillet to make sure it fills any gaps made by the Kevlar. Lastly, you might need to sand your fillets if the Kevlar pokes out a little. And in the case of one fin on my rocket, I had to lay down a second fillet on top of the first one to smooth everything out further. These three items are minor tweaks to your fillet making process, but you should keep them in mind. After the fins were done, I turned my attention to the rail guides. The kit comes with two rail buttons, but there's no place to place the aft button since this is a minimum diameter kit. I purchased some Acme aluminum guides from Giant Leap Rocketry for $4 plus shipping. I decided to use one guide on the bottom and one button at the top. I have seen way too many rail guides detached from a rocket while being put on the rail. So a third reason why I like the Mach 1 BT-60 kits is the double thick glass on the aft end of the rocket. I decided to take some 2M by 3mm screws and sand down the heads so they would fit inside the groove of the launch guide. Then I drilled holes into that launch guide and then used it to drill holes into the corresponding airframe. Since I took my time and went slow, the holes in the airframe were tight enough that the screws actually threaded into them. Between that and the epoxy, the rail guide is very secure. As for the rail button, I placed it behind the retainer and forward of the motor casing, and it too is going nowhere. Moving up the rocket, it was time to drill holes for the Mach 1 Badass Multibay. I used the supply drill guide that came with the retainer to drill the holes by first lining up one of the larger holes with the screw switch. Then I taped that guide into place to drill out all six holes. After that was done, drilling holes for the Multibay was also done. I drilled two more vent holes for air pressure at the top of the fin can and at the top of the payload bay. For the nose cone, I picked up a bulkhead and an M4I nut from Mach 1. I then epoxied that bulkhead into the nose cone shoulder. I am planning on using a BT-60 egg finder tracker bay for this nose, so I didn't epoxy the coupler into the nose on this particular kit. And there it is, the Mach 1 Starlight is built. All that is needed is testing of the charges, paint, and then she's ready to fly. All right, I hope you learned something. I hope that the Kevlar fillet didn't scare you. Fact is, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, I was at first a little bit nervous about doing my first uh, minimum diameter rocket, and then I realized, hey, I've been doing minimum diameter rockets for years. Uh, a lot of Estes rockets are minimum diameter. The difference is this is fiberglass and you're going much faster, so you have to learn new techniques to make it work. The Kevlar fillet is a great technique for these smaller minimum diameter rockets. Uh, I would not recommend it for a large 54 millimeter rocket with a baby L or a massive K. I just don't think it's going to hold like a tip to tip fiberglassing. But if you're doing this 38 millimeter or you're going to be doing a 54 you know, and you don't plan on punishing it, either you don't want to or you can't, 
Uh, Kevlar fillet is a great alternative to the tip-to-tip -tip fiberglass. If you don't have the rakes or the notches pre-drilled like Mach 1 does, not a problem. Just drill some holes into the root edge of your fin and then pass your Kevlar through that way. Make sure that when you build your minimum diameter rockets that you make sure that the attachment of the launch guides are absolutely secure. Do not let them fall off. That is the number one thing I see people fail on with these rockets is that their launch rails or launch guides fall off because they don't attach them very well. If you don't want to drill holes and screw them, screw them in like I did, that's not a problem. Just make sure you rough up the edges really, really well and you get some really strong tight bond epoxy that's going to keep them on there for as long as the rocket survives. The other thing you need to think about is minimum diameter by nature is extremely aerodynamic. This rocket right here is going to go at a minimum of 3,000 to 4,000 feet uh, reliably. Okay, a minimum. That means you absolutely need to have a tracker because average for this kind of rocket is about 6,000 feet for the motors that you can put in there. And you can push it all the way up to nine. So make sure you get a tracker for the nose cone. I am actually developing one of those right now. I hope to release it real soon. Uh, this video is being made in the beginning of August of 2020. I hope to release it within uh, a week or two of this video being made. And then you can have all the tracker options you need for your BT60 and 38 millimeter nose cones, as well as 65 and 54 millimeters as needed. So that being said, don't shy away from minimum diameter rockets if you've never done it before. They're super fun, it's super exciting, and they are a thrill to see fly. If you need to find one, go to Mach1Rocketry.com, pick one up. Uh, there are some great options there, including the Starlight, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Remember, Badass Rocketry starts with the build. Take your time, do a good job, and I'll see you guys later. Peace out, bye.